G'day, I'm Tim Skirm. This is the final of the three videos on lasting. Now this one concentrates on forming the toe puff and lasting the upper to finalise the whole deal. Now I've also, during this process, talked about glue and paste. The glue is really a, a contact adhesive and is to be applied to both surfaces evenly, as evenly as you can, and then allowed to dry so before pushing the two surfaces together to form the bond. Don't do it when the glue is wet because it will just release again. The other thing is the paste that I mentioned and that is actually a cereal based paste, just a child's paste or a wallpaper paste uh, mixed with PVA woodworking glue. Now the reason for the two different materials is that the contact adhesive just bonds solidly and the paste is put on wet so it slips so that you've got um, more chance to move things around and get them into place and then it will dry over a period of time once the moisture evaporates then it will form quite a, a good solid bond these two glues can't be mixed one is, is chemically based and the other one is water based they won't mix and you'll only have problems your toe puff must be dry, completely dry, with no moisture in it whatsoever before you proceed to the next step. Now you cut off all the high pleats. Just work your way down until you get down to the, to the base of the nails, where the nails were, because that will be the firmest part connected to your lining. Just keep shaving away until you've got rid of all the pleats, because they're not necessary. take the rasp and using the flat side you rasp inwards all your blows must be inwards otherwise you'll pick up the edge of the toe puff and it'll all peel off by this stage the toe puff is getting fairly thin on the bottom There's the bottom already done. Now you go around the sides. Don't use the heavy side for this. Use the medium or light side. And you go around and you're redefining your feather edge. Now you do have quite a lot of license here and you can actually alter the shape of the toe puff quite considerably. There is the finished feather edge. Your next blows are in a slightly backwards direction along the leading edge of the toe puff. This is so that it blends in completely with the lining. Don't worry if you do tear up the edge a bit. It's not the end of the world and it's quite a common thing. You can come back to that in a minute. If your skiving is really good, then you hardly need to do any of this at all. So it's worth spending the time on skiving. For the little bits you've ripped up, just put wet glue and press it back down. When it's dry, you can come back and use the rasp the other way, or you can use sandpaper just to finish off. Now you rasp across the top to find out if there are any high spots. Now the high spots will show up as areas that the rasp hits. The low spots will still remain shiny. That's why you don't hit too hard in the center of the toe puff. If you're using synthetic heat activated toe puffs, just check that it's going to fit, then heat it up on a heater or whatever device you have and work it really quickly because the glue does not stay sticky for very long. Cut the pleats off with the synthetics just the same as you did with the leather ones. Apply paste to the upper side only, not over onto the bottom edge. Now, synthetic stiffeners don't require you to do a lot of shaping of the bottom. 
put your two thumbs in to the upper and push through. You want you'll stop you getting paste on your fingers and on the upper. Grip the toe, pull it tight, and then just roll it over and put a nail in. This does not require much levering either. And then you go to your familiar five pulls again, halfway down to the joint for the first ones, one on each side. And after that, you go back to the joints. Then you go to the toe. Once again, you're pleating. Same procedure as before. With leather like this, it's probably slightly different from doing the lining. The leather's a little bit stiffer, uh, a little bit thicker, and so your pleating is possibly a little more complicated. But the same principle applies. You are, you're not going to allow wrinkles to go over the edge onto the upper area of the shoe. work side to side same as you did before all the way back to the joint then you hammer once again in an upwards direction just to drive out any air and also any slack over onto the flat surface on top go back put your nails in the tops of the pleats push it upright and hammer home and then hammer just on the outside. You'll notice there that there's no wrinkle past the nails. It may seem a little laborious in the fact you've got to do it over and over again but there are a few shortcuts you can take but it really doesn't pay. If you want it to look right you have to do this. It doesn't really take very long anyway, not when you're used to it. All your wrinkles have to come out in the toe and in the seat. You don't want them part way down the last, and there's no need for them to be down there either. the seat nicely finished as well you peel the wrinkles back so you can put the glue in there in the seat do the same thing here's where you're taking out the wrinkles that are left in the lining and the stiffener this is so that the upper can sit down flat when it's re-glued and then your sole can be attached to that There you go, it's all ready now to be sanded for the sole to be applied. <laughs> 